Um, I call this meeting to order at 3.09 p.m. Um, may we have roll call, please? I'm sorry, I'm still getting everybody's name written down. <laughs> Okay, um, Chair Gish? Here. Daniel Lopez? Here. Aurora Black? Here. Pam Parfit? Present. Angelique Chavez? I'm present. Jose Eli Vesquez? Here, thank you. You can call me, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Gina Marie Appalescent? Here. Manuel Sanchez? Here. Annika Mike? Here. <laughs> Ashley Chavez? Here. Vicki, can you please just call on the members of the mayor's committee? We need to determine if we have roll call. If we have a quorum, 
sorry, I already got all of you guys. And Kendra, that's. And I see Miriam. Yes. I'm sorry, first time you guys, so I hope you will be uh, patient with me. And then Christopher is excused. And since we have more than four members, we do have a quorum. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Next is approval of the agenda. And I unfortunately need to note several errors and issues with this agenda. Um, and I'm not enjoying having any of this. I want that on record. Um, where's my list? <laughs> so my issues with the agenda I have six items. Um, one, the first thing that I will go through is I never approved this agenda, the final draft of this agenda to go to the public. I never got to view it. Um, I never got to say, you know, that there were items missing, which there are. Um, and there was no discussion. It was just, oh, the draft that you made needs to be amended. And that's just what it's going to look like. And I never got to view it, um, which stops me from being able to prepare and make sure that I have all the attachments properly and everything. Um, I was never informed before Friday um, about the new draft of the aging resolution um, from Maria Tucker. I have only heard about it through Eli and talking offline off this outside of this meeting from Eli. Um, there has been no involvement directly with the mayor's committee um, before today. And I don't consider that to be a proper procedure to get input from the disability community. Um, I really appreciate the intent of the resolution as far as I can understand, but I have not had time enough to be part of it and thoroughly uh, what it will do for our community. And I think that that's an important part of this process because it is a resolution. Um, I There are no items of discussion uh, for Disability Pride Month, which I had requested Daniel to add. Um, I was the one who edited the minutes and transcript, um, so I can only hope that that was done correctly. Um, I was not sent a final PDF of the agenda and packet, that's accessible to be downloaded in one item without having to search each item for on Prime Gov, which is not accessible. And there are to be added in order to be able to discuss items 6A, 7B, 7C, 7E, 7 and G, which is the majority of our item. Um, and so with that being said, I can't approve it. I I it, it just we like it is not a prepared meeting. And um, so other members of the mayor's committee are welcome to vote how you choose. I every one of you to make your own decisions to go forward. If you want to, please do so. Uh, but I personally cannot, and that is why. Um, so with that said, vote to approve the agenda. May I vote to approve the agenda as is. We can't vote because the VPAC resolution was put under discussion items. So that is an issue. And that's the only thing I really sincerely feel prepared for to do in this meeting would vote for that personally. Um, has any other comments on the agenda or what, how to proceed with what is happening to speak? Go ahead. I request that anyone speaking show their face because I'm reading lips. So I don't want to miss discussion. Sounds like we're, I don't know if we're having a chair issue, if you don't mind, I can make a, um, you know, the agenda process, we really take a lot of pride in. Something that um, we've worked on past has always been easy. Sometimes it's better than others. Um, I, I will say, though, that uh, when Tom there, we had a pretty good process. It's relatively um, low time intensive on the MCD disability. Um, I think we, we also want to have the best meetings possible and use the most efficient time for the, that means that we have a professional agenda. 
Um, so so it, it, it's a little troubling. That we don't have an agenda that Chair Gish was able to, that wasn't able to be shared with the public, some items. Um, yeah. So it, it, it makes it hopeful that we can do a better job in the future and think about ways internally within the city and then with the mayor's committee on how we can have uh, that ahead of time we all have the time to review and has all the right features, links, and all the things we need to have efficient agenda and also so that we're not wasting everyone's time with as many items as possible. So that's my general comment. Uh, I don't know what other folks think. This is a processed co conversation, right? We're not talking about and about all the work we need to do. Um, it doesn't matter. So let's let's talk about that and how folks um, feel about to touch on these on this issue. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. I mean, as you know, Vicky indicated it's her first time, and also we are attempting to take on this. Um, um, and as we try to get information, um, there was some years to that. We finally were able to coordinate with, with Ms. Gish, but it wasn't in time. Um, in addition, we, uh, we uh, had difficulty getting format into an accessible format. Um, and also we were on that where issues related to that because as we have things uh, OCR'd, I believe there's a filter with PrimeGov that interferes with, with that process and causes them to become an image. And then in addition, as it's reached out to the public, Microsoft also does the same thing and it causes things to become converted back to rather than a PDF, editors aren't able to access it in an OCR accessible format. And so that we learned with uh, clerks on Monday. Um, and it was after most of things and were under the impression they were made accessible. Um, we're in the process of working with clerks to see if there's, um, in addition, IT will be assisting us in getting uh, this resolved, not just for this committee, but also for all committees that the city of government is involved with. Uh, it is a high priority issue and it's getting our attention. Now, every every uh, department had uh, significant steps to get documentation in advance to the city clerk. And when this happened, it was uh, that that our our good faith attempt was um, impeded with with that kind of a, a problem. So um, we're working hard to do that. Um, I at this moment don't have uh, an answer as to is there a fix or is there an alternative means to do it that we might have to go towards. Uh, so if someone has a question for me pertaining to this. Um, um, I'm that. Yeah, my question was that I asked, I said, when you get the agenda uploaded to God, will you please send me a copy so that I can send you my attachments? And that did not, and it was just sent to city clerks. And so all the attachments that I have for the, the items I listed, sh those should have attachments and those were not uploaded at all. It's not an issue of OCR. Those documents are accessible on my end. Um, mm -hmm. They would be ready to be just uploaded. They would not need to be OCR'd in addition. Um, they already are OCR'd. Um, and so it's more of an issue that there was a breakdown of communication and a breakdown of accessibility for me to review the final draft of the agenda before it went public. And I would have caught that we have an item that is need, needs to be voted on under discussions. About that, Because that, that resolution is extremely important to me. And I can see that there's an issue with I know PrimeGov is not easy to use. I'm aware of that. We've discussed that it's not accessible for anyone, um, but that this is not the process. And Helona found a workaround for it and had been working with me, sending me a PDF printout of what the agenda was going to look like, and then sent the city clerks after I approved it. That did not happen, and that was what I was expecting. Um, we do have a public comment from Lopez saying perhaps table those agenda items for the next meeting until which time everyone is able to review the agenda items and approve or provide feedback prior to the next meeting. The uh, problem of that is that even this um, resolution for uh, aging uh, was only uploaded on Monday. And I have not had thorough enough time because we've not been involved in the discussion to be able to vote and say yes or no on it. Um, and so it's it's that's part of a, a process issue as well of you know how do we include disabled people to be part of and feedback as a whole to us from the very beginning before it went to the governing body um, and requested our our thoughts and input um, and feedback and we're willing to give us as many meetings as we needed to be able to discuss it thoroughly 
and make sure that we understood the resolution. Um, you know, I can say I don't see anything wrong with the aging resolution at all, um, but I need to thoroughly understand how it will affect the community. And two days to read a law is not sufficient. Um, go ahead, and Kendra. I know you, you and Aurora have something to say. Um, one thing, Chair Gish, I was going to say is, don't we need a motion to approve the agenda? And then what is it? Then we would do the roll call. That was yeah. What I was yeah. Gonna... Thank you. Yes, I am. I am very stressed at the moment. Aurora, go ahead. Um. Well, I have to say I miss the normal format of, you know, having all the things to read, all the attachments, because I read every single one, honestly. Um, the other thing I would say is we jerry-rig jerry um, under action items number B, the bicycle and pedestrian. It doesn't say consideration of resolution, but could we could we do R&D for bicycle people? So my item was to discuss the changes that had been made early to hold a vote to oh. for amend. It was, mm -hmm. it was just to discuss the process that had been happening with me back and forth and with us meeting with Regina um, and discussing how to operate disability. Um, so that was not my intention to hold a vote. Otherwise, I would have stated that. Okay. And Karina Lopez says, table those items as well. Anyone on this committee should not feel like they have to vote on anything without being able to review it first. Thank you for allowing me to voice my opinion or suggestions. And thank you, Karina, for, for voicing those. Um, so give me a minute to review the agenda. I mean, we, we are really honestly tabling almost all of it. Um, can I just say, I did a word of worse as that the agendas that we've been able to see before left the members of the committee very clear on what we were going to be talking, discussing, voting, and et cetera. I and mean, you only have an agenda and you can't get to any attachments. It's like. Yeah, and that's that's my frustration as well as I know what we were supposed to be viewing um, and reading and being prepared for. Um, and it also helps me to prepare to run the meeting when I know that you all have had a chance to read those those items. Um, it, it's really hard when I know everything. I mean, the only way that we've done that was to read the documents in full on live recording. I can't do that. I just can't. Um, and Eli, I know you had a presentation for 6A that was supposed to be attached. Um, we can do that. We don't necessarily have to attach that presentation. If you are prepared to do the presentation, I can include that. Just let me know. We would have to do screen share, which is not completely accessible. Um, it's not as accessible as someone being able to review it. Um, we can't view the screen. Um, so tell me your thoughts on that. So my thoughts are because it's about <laughs> accessible documents and part of that is to provide documents in advance for people who have access concerns. Um, I'm a big fan of teaching by doing. So if it were something that didn't relate directly about accessible documents and sharing documents, I may have a different opinion, but I think we table it because it wasn't okay. provided in advance. Okay, thank you, Eli. Um, so then 7A, consideration of resolution 2024, Councillor Amanda Chavez. Um, again, I do not feel that I had enough time if the members of this, this committee feel like you had enough time to review that and understand in full what that is going to do to change our community um, for seniors and um, retired people, please. Um, let me know so that I can include it or table it until the next meeting. I did read the attachments on that one. And one thing I would say is, I think we should move ahead with the agenda items that include some of our guests that okay. are here to present. Okay. And we can definitely have a discussion on it. I just don't know if I feel comfortable holding a vote. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I think maybe 
if that is possible, we can have a discussion. Um, I don't know if that um, is a problem, but that's what I feel is needed. We did not have that. Um, so I can include that. Um, next would be 7B, Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Committee, um, discussion of changes made by Regina Wheeler. Um, I can include that because it was predominantly verbal. Um, and then also the request for disabled committee members participation from BPAC, we can include that. Um, although um, I want to tell them that I didn't receive a priorities list, which I was hoping to receive. Um, so that we can have a, a broader understanding of um, how our committees align. Um, and so that will be part of the discussion. Um, and then 7D, we can proceed. Um, thank you, Maria. Um, Maria says, I am happy to give an overview and answer any questions. So thank you, I appreciate that very much. Um, letter to advise mayor, um, that was, that needs to be tabled. So 7E is tabled. Um, 7F is tabled. It's, uh, including web accessibility. It was supposed to include Eli's, um, very thorough, uh, review of our city website and how it is not accessible. And it was not a complete document, obviously, but it's a good overview. Um, 7G. Um, discussion of final draft of the mayor's committee on disability priorities, which I did not receive for, yet from Regina, and that I think that copy that Regina did when we met Regina was extremely helpful, and I would really appreciate um, receiving that so that I can share that with the mayor's committee members. Um, and then updates on the emergency kit can proceed because that is just a discussion. And then I really honestly don't know what to do about the BPEC resolution being under discussion items. And quite honestly, I feel a little bit devastated by that because of the amount of work that the mayor's committee has done to support that resolution. And here it is finally going forward and it is under the wrong, uh, it's, it's just the wrong agenda item. Um, so maybe we can have a discussion on that. Councilor Garcia, go ahead. Hi there, everybody. I apologize, I'm on my way home from picking up kiddo. But uh, in regards to the BPAC resolution, I'm completely okay with us moving that to your next meeting. Uh, if that means it gets delayed by a week or two, I mean, a meeting or two, that that is fine with me ultimately. My goal is to ensure that we allow your committee, Chair Gish, to review the resolution and ultimately have a say on it. So uh, if that means pushing it off to your March meeting, I am completely fine with that. So um, just let me know how you want to move forward, Chair Gish. Thank you, and I appreciate that, and I apologize. Uh, I would have changed that if I had had an opportunity to. Um, and thank you for being here as well. Um, so we will, well, we can have a discussion on it if you would like. Um, I think if Councillor Garcia, if you are able to stay, um, for the meeting, we can have a discussion on it. We are tabling a lot of items, so we should get to it, uh, somewhat quicker than it was, uh, originally anticipated. And I can actually, um, well, I don't know if I can move it up because it's not an, it's not an action item. Um, Go ahead. I brought up about it, that part of it being under action items at number B. Yeah. I was thinking of how they do things in the state legislature. They can shift things around as long as they've got a placeholder. And I'm wondering if that could serve as a placeholder for us actually to consider the. I think we can discuss it. Okay. I don't think we can hold a vote because I didn't, I didn't state that we would be voting on it in action items. Okay. So that's what I don't, I don't feel comfortable moving forward with that um, because it's not explicit that we will be voting on it in this agenda. So 
Um, and Chair Gish, yeah. I'm, I'm happy to join you all until five o'clock. Okay. We have a special city council meeting at 530. Okay. And so I'm yours until five o'clock. Awesome. That, so Thank we you need so to much. move things around. I'm, I'm here to join you all and, and support your committee as best as I can. Okay, thank you. So we will be discussing this then under, instead of 8A, um, we will go ahead and discuss it under 7B, and it will just be a discussion of the resolution um, and the changes that have been made. And otherwise we will table the vote um, until March. Okay, so I need to rerun, rerun that through really quick. Um, so we are tabling 6A, tabling uh, 7E, 7F, 7G, and 8A. And we will be um, discussing 7A, 7B, 7C, 7D, and 7H. Are we doing G? No, G is G is uh, we didn't have a draft of the of the priorities in order to review okay. the final right. draft. And it's actually a really good draft because Regina took the time and I am so grateful mm -hmm. to go through each of our priorities and identify where we would need to be with that, whether mm -hmm. it's something that we, you know, who in the city we would go to, or if there's a, a you know, a resolution that resolves the issue or anything. She she did incredible work on our priorities list. Nice. And so I am so grateful, um, but I really wish that I had that to share with everyone. I would love to see it. Yeah. Okay, move okay. to approve the agenda as amended. Okay. Is there a second? A second. May we have roll call vote, please. Chair Gish. Yes. Miriam Jaher. Yes. Aurora Black. Yes. Pam Parfit. Yes. Eli Fresquez. Yes. Angelique Chavez. Yes. Gina Marie Opalescent. Mm, Gina Maria. Yes. Oh, Maria. I'm sorry. Please okay. forgive me. Kendra Garcia. Yes. It passes. Thank you. <clears throat> Next is, give me a second. <laughs> this all got shuffled around. Um, next is approval of minutes and the process to approve the minutes uh, works a lot better when we incorporate Aurora's edits into the potential final draft because it makes it more cohesive for me to understand the changes and not going back and forth between two different documents. Um, Eli, go ahead. Yeah, I, I want to um, first of all thank Councillor Garcia, um, one for just the work on BPAC, but also the process. Um, of getting it to our attention. But also I wanna give a shout out to Aurora for all her work on the transcripts. Um, she goes through it um, and really makes very important edits to it. And I don't know when she started doing it, but now it's like, I'm just waiting for her to come up, come up with the edits because she just does it. So Aurora, thank you so much for doing that work. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. So I do have two changes to the minutes, not to the transcripts. Under others attending, um, it says Daniel Lopez member and Vicki Montgomery member, and it really should identify since they are city staff, um, that they are city staff and what their titles are uh, or their role. Sometimes it's a role like Helona is, is listed as clerk. Um, that's fine. Um, it should either be title or uh, your role. Um, other than that, I have no additional edits. Move to approve the uh, the minutes and transcript as amended. You have a second. I second it. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> oh, sorry, Madam Chair. <laughs> it just came out automatically. 
That happens when you know someone long enough. <laughs> All right, maybe have a roll hey. call, please. Chair Gish. Yes. Miriam Jower. Miriam, you're on mute. Yes. I'm you. sorry. Yes. Okay. Aurora Black. Yes. Pam Parfit. Yes. Eli Fitz. Yes. And Elite Chavez. Gina Maria Opalescent. Yes. Kendra Garcia. Yes. The minute says amended has been approved. Thank you. So next we have uh, public comments, 15 minutes total. Um, and um, we have a lot of people attending. So I am hopeful that um, um, so that each person who wants to speak, raise your hands first so that I know how many people want to speak um, under public comments. Um, and if you need to type your statement in public comments as well, please don't read it. Um, otherwise, um, keep it as short as possible. Thank you. Um, we have Jen Weber. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, good afternoon, Chair Gish and committee members. My name is Jen Weber, and I'm the president of Bike Santa Fe. And I'm here today to um, share with you Bike Santa Fe's position on the um, pedestrian bicycle maintenance resolution that you're discussing today. Bike Santa Fe's mission is to promote cycling as a healthy, safe, affordable, and environmentally sound means of transportation and recreation that benefits all neighborhoods and all residents of Santa Fe. As such, Bike Santa Fe is in strong support of the resolution for maintenance and installation of bicycle and pedestrian facilities <clears throat> on your agenda today. We hear often from our members about the uh, terrible condition of trails, bike lanes, and sidewalks from months of icy conditions to weeds and unswept debris making lanes unpassable and forcing cyclists to ride among large speeding cars, Santa Fe is a very dangerous place to ride a bike. And it's no better for pedestrians. You know, a recent story in the New Mexican about an insurance carrier dropping the city highlighted several recent settlements between the city and people who had been injured on poorly maintained sidewalks and trails. Um, a lot of injuries due to poor maintenance and upkeep, really too many. Any injury is too many. So we applaud BPAC for developing this resolution and also for getting um, feedback from the commi your committee in the process. We agree with them that unsafe conditions have persisted on bike lanes, trails, and sidewalks in Santa Fe for years, and that well-maintained um, bike lanes, trails, and sidewalks are essential to mobility, accessibility, quality of life, community health, and yes, tourism in the city. So um, I look forward to um, eavesdropping on your discussion today and uh, urge your support when it's before you in March. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, are there any other public comments? Again, you can type it in the chat and I will read it. Um, I'm not familiar with everyone who is attending and there are quite a few attendees. So, um, so if there are no further public comments, um, we can move on to action items. And I know Regina, uh, one thing that I had forgotten when I was doing the amendments um, to the agenda, um, you had asked to move the BPAC. Um, discussion up, um, but we only have like 15 minutes, so I don't know if that is even enough time for you or um, or if, let me know. I, I, if it's not, like I said, we're, we'll be discussing it again in the next meeting, and I can make sure that it's, you know, in accordance with your schedule. Thank you so much, Madam Chair, um, for your consideration. Um, I think, you know, since you have the city councilor, you've got the real expert um, that you'll want to speak to. And okay. if there's any questions for me, perhaps Daniel could um, relay them to me and then I can be prepared, hopefully at the next meeting, although I, I may actually may not be in the country um, at your next meeting. So I don't think I'll be able to make that one either. Okay. Um, Maybe we can get you the questions and you could make a statement by email or something and I could read it or, you know, okay. if we have, yeah. 
And I hope you saw the memo that was with the pack with the with yeah. the resolution. So that yeah. mostly I think that provides a lot of perspective too. Thank you okay. so much. Yeah, thank you, Regina. Um, Gina Marie, you had had your hand up. Yes, I know that we've discussed this prior. Is there a method or a place to um, put observations about things that need to be changed in terms of like disability, anything in the city? And um, I'm referring specifically yesterday, I was downtown on Water Street. And the disability parking was on the left side of the street. So I was getting off right into traffic and praying that no cars are going to come along and wipe out my ramp or something. Yeah, so we East. have had numerous issues downtown with ice lately. Um, and I know that the parking downtown is not accessible. Like it, the way that people have to get out or if it's icy, like a lot of the, the accessible parking is on, on the side where it's north facing. So it's just complete, a complete sheet of ice. Um, so one of the discussions that had been happening was to move it into areas where there was sunshine at least so that it would at least melt within a couple days. Um, but overall the parking downtown really needs to be reviewed because most people most of those spaces do if you have a, a wheelchair um you do have to get off into the traffic um and that is there are very few that have the access aisle um daniel go ahead okay yeah um we did go and inspect um during when it was most icy um 60 uh accessible parking spaces we are working on identifying those that are in the shade and relocating them to where you can deploy an accessible ramp onto the sidewalk that's a little more smoother and more accessible. Um, that is part of the transition plan development. We're going to identify specific meters and and their conditions. So those changes will be made down down the road, but we are aware of it, and we're working with uh, parking enforcement to court to uh, correct those. So maybe in the future we'll still have ice and snow, but but it'll melt because it'll be on a sunnier side of the street and in an accessible location. Thank you, Daniel. Did that answer your question, Gina Maria, or your issue? Okay. And we will be part of that, of course, you know, I mean, maybe if you if you know of areas downtown where you could see that they could easily put an access aisle um, that would be safe for people to exit, maybe you can, you know, say that I would feel safe getting out of my vehicle there. Well, um, I've never, ever, ever deployed a D mold, whatever it is, on into traffic. I was like, what the heck? Yeah. Go ahead, Daniel. Yes, um, we have to take into consideration that we do have to have a percentage of those accessible parking spaces for individuals with disabilities who drive vehicles and use wheelchairs. There are a percentage, not um, not everyone. It's not exclusively just those with ramped vehicles or persons who are passengers. Some individuals with disabilities do drive cars, do remove their chairs, do transfer. And so that's why we have a mixture of that opportunity for people to park in that manner. And in some cases, um, and well, in all cases, people with disabilities can park at any meter and not be charged. And so in in that situation as well, uh, people who, who drive and don't use an accessible device or a, a mobility device, can park in a regular space uh, it, at times. It just is so, so sometimes it's not required to have an accessible one for that means, but there are those who need to transfer onto a sidewalk as a driver or, or they transfer out. Uh, and that's why we provided on that side as well for a driver to pull their wheelchair out onto the sidewalk, transfer out of the driver's side and get into a wheelchair and continue on. I guess. You know, this is my um, my national wish 
that this, <laughs> like why go small, right, Kendra? <laughs> that I wish people would understand that van accessible, I always want to say, why don't we call it ramp reserved? You know, I mean, I understand people with sports cars may have disabilities, but I need the ramp to get out. And I need one of those big places for the ramp. Otherwise, you end up with your knees on the car next to you, and that's not good either. I always get to that point and say, call the press. You're muted, Turkish. The parking in um, in the parking garages, of course, has access aisles usually, a lot of it. Um, but then to get out onto the sidewalks when you leave the parking garage is, you know, the sidewalks are, are very unstable. Um, they're not smooth and they're, some are, are angled improperly. There's hills, there's all kinds of issues after. So yeah, I, I'm definitely aware of a lot of those issues um, going on where even if the parking garage is accessible, everything outside of it usually is not. Um, and so at least at some point you get to a point where it's not. Um, so we can definitely, um, I can, I'll put this down as an agenda item for the future. It might not be in the next meeting, but maybe in April um, when we can discuss this more thoroughly. Um, it depends. It might be on the next agenda item if I can make the time for it. Um, but we can definitely discuss this more in depth because um, right now this is on public record. So I have one more question. So we don't have to pay in the in the parking meters if we have a tag. What is the um, the policy with the parking meters that are covered with the red hoods? What mm -hmm. what I don't know what that means. If it says no parking, it's no parking. So some days they just go along and decide you can't park there on that day? Yeah, yeah. And a lot of times what I've heard, go ahead, Daniel. I know you know yeah. more than I do, so. Well, well if it's if it's uh, shut down for with a red bag, it's usually something is wrong. Maybe there is um, a hazard that needs to be corrected. Maybe the meter isn't working, um, but that red bag is basically closing that parking space and We'd ask that even people with disabilities respect that because if there is a hazard or something, you want we want, wouldn't want you to expose yourself to anything um, dangerous. So um, when it's a red bag, it's not available. Thank you. Are there any other public comments? Um, if there are no more public comments. We can move on to our next item which is action item 7A, uh, consideration of resolution number 2024 from Councilor Amanda Chavez, resolution committing to being a more age-friendly city and enrolling in the American Association of Retired Persons AARP Age-Friendly States and Communities Network, which to the extent it is possible will be a process that incorporates universal design principles. And we have Manuel Chav Chav Sanchez, Senior Services Director um, and Maria Sanchez Tucker, Community Services Director. And is there anyone else um, going to be speaking on this that's present? No. Okay. Uh, you have the you have the the time. Go ahead. Thank you, Chair Gish. Um, good afternoon, members of the committee. Um, I'm Maria Sanchez Tucker, the Community Services Director, and I'm um, pleased to discuss the. Um, resolution that's presented before you. Um, this resolution is um, the first step in a three to five year process to enroll in the AARP's network of age-friendly communities. And the network is really a commitment and a um, action step in beginning to make sure that our um, that Santa Fe is a livable community for everyone of all ages. As we all know, we're all aging and we're having a growing aging population, but the um, age-friendly network really um, gives us a process to evaluate our community, our areas of, of livability and how we're making things equitable and accessible, all services and 
um, it really just is a starting point to enroll into the um, age-friendly network. And so what would take place was this resolution would go forward and I'm happy to, put, to um, receive any input. We can, um, this is gonna be a three to five year process. And so what takes place is that we do an application to enroll in the network. And then we would establish um, listening sessions throughout our community. Uh, where we can get information on what the community sees as the um, areas that we would need support in, what are the eight domains of livability, so transportation, outdoor spaces, housing, health and human services, social participation, all of our community services, accessibility, and so all of these ideas and needs within our community um, would be evaluated and, and we'd have give an opportunity for the community to come forward. Then we would also provide a survey, a draft a survey. And then based on our results, it would come back to um, the council governing body to evaluate and discuss an ac action plan. And of course, this would be something holistically done throughout the city. Um, the city works very hard to make sure that we have an accessible and equitable community. And so this would just be a commitment that would guide and provide a framework for the work we do as a, as a city throughout all of our departments to make sure that we're providing an accessible and friendly, livable community for, uh, for everyone in our community. So I'm happy to ask any, answer any questions and, um, and, um, we can also, um, uh, Manuel's also available if he has, if you have any questions for him as well, he's our director of senior services. So thank you very much. Pam, go ahead. I have a question. I have a rental property that I'm remodeling to be a universal design but there are no buses, there are no services, there's not good access to the property itself. So I'm just wanting to put in my two cents when you were saying about transportation and accessibility outside of a building has to match because then there's no point in making the inside accessible if you can't get to it. I think that's a very good point. And, you know, working with Daniel and, and public works and holistically with planning and zoning and housing and all of our different departments as we work together, you know, as we develop plans, we want to make sure that we're keeping this, these issues in front of mind that we have that framework that looks at how we make things more accessible for everyone. So, um, at some point in our lives, we will all need a little more assistance and that we all need things to be more friendly. So how do we make sure that um, we are um, planning with one thought in mind and keeping this at the forefront? So I don't know, Pam, that I have the uh, answer right now, but hopefully this process that we undertake will um, start a commitment and get us thinking about the needs that we have within the city and the changes that can be made through policy and planning. Where would a landlord go with an accessible rental so that the city could respond and support the landlord and the client? And I think, you know, with transportation, I think we need to do a better job of, of providing information about how people can receive accessible rides. So if you're um, 60 and older, our senior services can provide transportation. There's a partnership with the United Way that provides rides to people. And so I think, you know, thinking about the resources that we do have, making sure that landlords and others in the community have that information so they can potentially provide it to a broader part of the community, I think is really important. Daniel has his hands up. Yeah. Daniel, go ahead. Okay. Well. I was able to review the um, res proposed resolution and the action plans. It is a a a good step and 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 it's consistent with my belief systems. Um, back in 1992, I worked with 
and was trained by Ron Mace, who's created the barrier free design, uh, universal access. Um, and that's part of my philosophy. When I approach compliance, um, that we provide full integration of people with disabilities in all activities and programs and facilities. In addition to that, uh, in participation in the uh, creation of a more um, accessible community, um, that includes housing, transportation. Um, in my past, I've worked with making um, accessible housing for, for uh, private sector. Transportation, we would have to also look at things like vehicle for higher ordinance, if that's what exists here for requiring um, app type services that like Uber and Lyft to be accessible to afford people with disabilities accessible transportation. And of course, as you know, our system, our paratransit and our mainline systems are undergoing um, an assessment and also an improvement of services to see where we can go to better serve uh, all people and to provide access for those with disabilities. And so with answers to Pam, um, down the road, we would have to look at neighborhoods and see if there's a deficiency of, of, of services and if there's an opportunity for us to provide mainline or, or, or paratransit to connect to the mainline. And of course, senior services does fill a gap, but it's not the complete answer. Um, and we need to look at what other options are there. And I can tell you this, that this city has so much opportunity to, to do things and they and the staff is very positive in going in that direction. And I look forward to, to the community providing their input like Pam has, so that we can factor all those components. And this resolution would help um, focus not just accessibility in a medical model, but as a community. And that's what we want to go in that direction. Thank you. Daniel, and yes, this is just the first step. There's going to be many more opportunities to provide feedback and input as we continually look at the evaluation of our community and what our needs are, and then how we put this forward as a city to make sure that we're um, putting accessibility and equitable equitable community as a as a priority. And so um, really this resolution just gives us the ability to apply and begin this process that will will be um, a three to five year process. Right. And we'll be we would really love um, this committee's participation as we we begin that process. Okay, I'm good. I'm uh, sticking my neck out here, a very sore subject, section eight is such a problem in this city. But what I'm bringing up right now is the big picture of why landlords hesitate to, re to uh, rent to section eight people because their needs are beyond just their rent. It's so great. And the burden of extra expenses falls on the landlord and there's no payment for the landlord hiring yard people, snow removal, um, accessibility features, remodels. It, I mean, you can get a ramp in, but the house is 30, 40, 50 years old and it's, it's, it's $200,000 to remodel. It's, it's a huge problem. And I'm just tacking this in to a bigger problem, which is the whole city and Section 8 and incomplete access everywhere. Eli, go ahead. Yeah, this is so wonderful. Um, congratulations for the city for starting this journey on um, focusing on the community and investing in our families and our seniors. Um, I wanted to offer, and I don't know what the process is at where we're at right now, but I do have ideas about putting explicitly some language in there that might be able to help support the resolution when it comes to the American Disabilities Act. I think there's a real opportunity to maybe give it um, some extra protections and, and quality control and frankly, like compliance and safeguarding it 
Um, so I have some language that I've drafted. I'd be happy to share. I don't want to also create any log jams or anything like that, um, but it would be something maybe uh, a bit new for a resolution, new in the sense that maybe other similar resolutions in other cities haven't had. Um, but I'd love to provide this as um, sort of a nuanced way of looking at it. Basically, it's putting in some language from the Americans with Disabilities Act to give it that extra enhancement to support the resolution. Um, so I'm not sure what, what process there is to provide that kind of explicit um, language, but I'd be happy to help support in any way I can. And I have that language and I'm, I'm ready to fire away. Just let me know how. I'm not sure about the process. If you wanted to look at that language and discuss it as a committee, um, I think it would be helpful if the committee did, you know, review that and provide input. Um, also, having Daniel uh, provide input on it would be important as well. Um, we may want to have other input from other department heads that would be. Um, carrying out this work, um, that may be something we would want to share with them as well. You're on mute. Sorry, mm -hmm. I keep doing that. <laughs> um, if you could get that to me in a written format, Eli, and then I can make sure that it's in the next packet and we can discuss it. Um, yeah, I don't, that's what one of the things that I keep saying, I don't understand yet the process to amend a resolution or, you know, to have these discussions back and forth, we're still learning. Um, and so, you know, what is it, what is involved? And obviously it's based on the content of the edits of what would be involved, but, um, but uh, definitely get that to me and I will make sure that we all uh, have the ability to pitch in our thoughts. Um, Kendra Garcia, go ahead. Okay, thank you, Chair Gish. Um, so I had one, I mean, well, I think I have two questions. Is by any chance, has there been any plan or area for this universal design? And then also, would this apply to, because a lot of our families have generational homes, a lot of them that are grown up in a um, maybe getting that extra help, maybe. Um, I did see something recently through the city that was passed and to help with those modifications for homes to make it more um, compliant. What, is that gonna be part of this or is that something just like separate or? Very broadly. Um, stated in the resolution that universal design would be applied when possible, um, you know, with the idea that we were going to evaluate as part of this process is sort of um, the city services and programs and facilities um, and how this um, and how we are providing um, these, how we're serving the eight domains of livability according to the AARP. And so we have a framework to work from. And so um, I don't know if Daniel might be able to speak more, a little bit more to the universal design aspect of it. Um, that would be helpful. <laughs> That's, a, I'm not prepared at the moment, but um, for the most part, I mean, what we're, as we approach things, um, there are minimum guidelines and minimum requirements that ADA provides, and that language is pretty specific. But what universal design does, it, it enhances that a little bit more so that it's more um, available to broader populations. And the approach is more community-based. And mm -hmm. so, so rather than regulatory, it's more, how we see our programs, like for an example, parking, instead of putting a car, a space for a car or in a space for a van, instead of having separate, we would create a universal design parking spaces that if a car parks, it's accessible, if a van parks, it's accessible because it's been made a little bit larger and those kinds of things would be put in place. Um, and that's kind of what we'd have to break down 
um, every little component of how we provide services, how we um, construct facilities. Yes, the minimum requirements are there, but if we can make um, a path of travel, not a ramp, and instead put in um, uh, a, a, a longer slope, a, a slope uh, that is 5% rather than 8%. So that way there is no need for handrails and aesthetically uh, how accessibility is blended into the environment and you don't notice that it's there. An example is bathrooms and public facilities. We can go with no doors and that way someone with uh, strength issues or carrying children can go into a bathroom without having to pull a door or push a door. And and that becomes more accessible and more universal for for the community. And so those are some examples. And so it, we would be breaking down um, projects and looking for those opportunities, and and in all areas, services and architectural uh, facilities. Okay. Well, thank you both, Maria and Daniel, for answering that. The second question um, or suggestion that I have when it comes to the needs assessment or is maybe partnering with your local um, agencies that work with individuals that are of this nature. So, um, and if you guys plan on doing that. All right, Kendra, can you repeat the question? Oh, if you guys were going to partner with um, local agencies that work with this population? Absolutely. Um, so beginning this process, we'll have listening sessions throughout the community. Um, rather than develop a, another committee, we'll use committees like yours to provide input, our senior services committee, um, and then listening sessions. And so that would be one way that we would gain input and work with other partners and then also um, provide a, a community-wide uh, survey that would provide information that we can use to evaluate where we're going. And it's really an iterative process where we would continually um, strive to um, use this framework as we're planning projects so that we include the universal design that we can you know, include um, making things more accessible for all ages. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Um, Eli, would you want to read the little piece that you typed in the chat? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I just put in here that the floor is ADA and universal and inclusive design is the ceiling providing greater access. Um, I also want to mention something too, and this is without doing so, uh, the city is really invo in invoking something called human-centered design, um, which is a really um, new approach to problem solving. And it's really looking at the end user and the customer and providing feedback in, in order to develop the design. Oftentimes, even universal design is done in a vacuum. Um, it's better. It's, you know, when you have universal design and when you meet the standards and the compliance, but in order to have full inclusive design, that human design centered approach, which is looking at the perspectives and input from the community in order to make the designs is um, really the way to go. And it sounds like that's fantastic. It's built into this process and what the city is doing. So, so excellent. Thanks. Thank you, Eli. Councillor Garcia. You're on mute. <laughs> Let me go ahead and take myself off mute. I got out of the, the abuse of being on Zoom. So um, Madam Chair, members of the body, I just wanted to provide some clarification around next steps in regards to the proposed amendment changes that Member Frescas had mentioned. Um, looking over the schedule, this resolution is proposed to be a governing body at the end of the month. And so I know that this body's not meeting until March, but that does not prohibit uh, the res, uh, any proposed amendments being uh, put moved forward by uh, city councilor or the mayor. And so uh, I, I would recommend that if you don't take a vote on it, on the proposed language today, then uh, an individual can work with 
a respective governing body member to carry the amendments should should they deem worthy. Um, the only thing I would want to bring to your attention is if the amendments proposed amendments uh, change the caption or intent of the resolution, uh, it wouldn't be allowed because you'd have to reintroduce the resolution. So it sounds like uh, Member Fresquez has some proposed changes to the whereas section of the resolution. Um, that, so it doesn't seem like it would necessarily change the intent or caption. So just trying to help out with the process as, uh, as mentioned, it can be a bit complicated and definitely want to make sure that folks feel like there are avenues to have their voice heard, whether it be through the body as a whole or as an individual. You can always reach out to a governing body member to propose the amendments, and then it's up to the governing body member to uh, move forward to introduce them. So just some process clarification since it was brought up earlier. Thank you, I really greatly appreciate that. Um, let's see, Daniel. Oh, <laughs> well, I, I, well, before I mean, well, yeah, because I noticed that Amanda Chavez is the sponsoring member of council. So I, I suppose with the cooperate with the help of Ms. Tucker, we can talk to Eli and coordinate what proposed changes we can take to the counselor. And if we can do that soon, so that we are on board with with what with the schedule that's that's taking place, and also that us three can 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 discuss anything beyond those types of changes. So that way we we're comfortable with that. Um, uh, I guess down the road the committee will have a comment on on that at the next meeting, and that could be communicated to the to the counselor who's sponsoring this. Uh, resolution. And in, in addition to the outreach to communities um, that was asked, um, in addition to the disability community, this type of resolution would require that we also include those that are going to be impacted. And that would be like the restaurant association, that would be like business community, so that they can understand the type of community that this resolution is striving to build and so that they can be included for example if if a store has a policy uh, uh, that they don't allow pets into their in, into the store but they they are where they're required to provide service animals accessible accessibility to their stores but to give them tools on how to handle a situation when someone is being um, aggressively trying to bring in their pet and how to approach that without creating um, an altercation, you know, dispute resolution, teaching them through trainings, and that would be part of this um, universal design and inclusion uh, that we would teach business owners how to handle those types of stressful situations, and, and there are ways to do that. So, so that's when I say, yes, we would have to reach out not just to people with disability groups, but to even the business community so they can be a part of the building of this community forward. Thank you, Daniel. Um, Aurora? Um, I, I wanna say that I really trust uh, Eli to, to bring those changes to the resolution because he's our eagle eyes our legal eyes and he's really good at it yeah. so if he's found some ways to improve that resolution i wholeheartedly support that thank you aurora yeah and eli if you want to explain really quick um how long you've been working with counselor chavez on this i think that that would be helpful for everyone here to know yeah not long um i i think there had been this conversations about this for quite a while. Sorry, my camera's off. I'll turn it back on. And I'm going to have to jump onto my phone real quick. So uh, I'll be off camera. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that th this issue has been around brewing for quite a while. Um, and uh, Councillor Chavez reached out to me, I want to say in December, 
And she said that a resolution was occurring. And then she shared it with me um, probably about three weeks ago. And I provided comment, sent it to her. And then uh, Chair Gish, I let you know that this was brewing and something that um, the, the mayor's committee would be interested in reviewing. Uh, Councilor Chavez was very open to any kinds of amendments or discussions. And she definitely was very supportive, in fact, encouraging of it coming to the mayor's committee on disability for feedback and input. Um, so I think uh, this is the time to kind of have that uh, feedback and input and just happy to help in any way. Thank you, Eli. Um, so I guess my next question for everyone is what is most helpful? Um, I know that if this had gone to us before it went to the governing body, which is, of course, my hope <laughs> going forward for all you know, proposed resolutions, um, because then we aren't on this time crunch and we do have the ability to really thoroughly review um, how it will impact community, you know, both positively or in a negative way or or change anything that might be worded in a way that might be misunderstood or, you know, um, all of those important things in, in resolutions. Um, and so, you know, for me, like I said, I don't feel comfortable voting um, today. Um, and I, you know, for me, I would being given two days really um, to, for everyone on this committee to really read it um, isn't enough. Um, and so I'm, I guess besides just, you know, contacting uh, Councillor Chavez with our thoughts going forward, um, is there anything that we as a committee can do um, to support this? Um, I mean, as a whole, I don't think, like, it's, like I said, I, I don't feel comfortable hold, holding a vote. Um, the BPAC resolution, you know, just to give some perspective, was enough time for us to write a thorough letter of support, um, highlighting how it would, you know, increase accessibility um, in the community. And for something that I really support, that's kind of my stance is to have the mayor's committee do something like that. Um, but one meeting isn't enough um, time to really do that because we would need to vote on the letter and, you know, there's a whole process for that. So, um, so I guess I'm wondering beyond individually, um, what would even, would we voting on it in March even be of assistance? Um, since it's going to the governing body, as far as I can tell, is it before then or is it after? What's the schedule? It would be going to the governing body on the 28th of this month. Yeah, so it would be, we wouldn't even be able to vote on it before it goes to the governing body. Um, so, cause I think, go ahead, Daniel. Um, unless this committee in an action wants to hold another meeting so they can vote on this item and maybe make it only this item, um, that's something that maybe as chair you could request or someone could request that motion and then specify the date um, and then we can post that and take action with um those uh recommendations to the uh the res changes to resolution and in addition um bring forward a letter of support with the idea that those changes would be included uh so i would ask that um someone in, on the committee um consider that option and if i'm incorrect if the chair could clarify how that can be done uh, before the deadline so that that uh, yes this is a fast tracking approach but this is a vital um, resolution that has significant impact and I think it it's important that this committee weigh in and as quickly as possible and as thorough as possible and so anyone willing to work with me Ms. Tucker and Eli and any other person, let's let's get on this, let's get it posted, let's get it on the agenda, let's make a motion, and let's make take action at that time, and then the twenty first, and send it forward. Yeah. So 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 let's let's get a date. If so that's the fourteenth. 
The 14th would be really close because I know that the city clerk's office requires advance notice and agenda and all of that. Um, and it would also put a really big strain on me to get a letter written and identify how this committee would support it. Um, if I had, well, even, so even if I wrote a letter with everyone's thoughts and opinions of changes, that letter would need to be a final draft before, yes. before we send it. So I, we would need to hold two meetings because we would need to hold a meeting to first discuss it and then put it into a letter and vote for a final draft of the letter to be approved. Uh, th this is Eli here. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I, I wonder two things, and Aurora, you're, I feel like you're the resident expert on this too. Um, but one one thought is, is there any reason why we can't, um, well, first of all, do we absolutely need a letter um, that, that we need that uh, before the end of February? And it could be a verbal vote of confidence and support in a special meeting. Uh, second of all, is there any way to share a draft letter in advance of the special meeting and then vote on the letter at, during the meeting. I know that's a lot of work. I'm happy to support and work with Daniel and others um, because I do agree. I think I agree with Daniel. This is super important and kind of um, uh, something we should expedite. Um, and so I'm, I'm happy to support, but I just wonder if there's some way either we just don't have the letter and we do a verbal support with the letter coming after, or we have a draft in advance and then vote in one meeting on the final. Didn't we do that with the bicycle letter? Yes. Basically, okay. yes, but we, we did eventually vote on the final draft and there was. But I think it would be, we can pass the letter with any changes that have been recommended. And, and so long as that content is in place, then that letter could stand. So we wouldn't need to really, really have two meetings. We could just at that moment, um, since it's the only item we would be addressing, um, it would be a work in progress and then we finally vote on it. That would be basically discussion, action, and then we approve the letter with those changes. And that's what I would recommend that we do that. I think we can do it in one meeting, um, especially if we meet before the meeting and come up with those changes in advance and maybe there'll be limited discussion beyond that and we have a draft of a proposed letter and we can almost foresee no real significant changes if it's something that Eli and I and others have given significant thought and I think I, I'm hoping that the committee has um, confidence in our ability to to come up with something good yeah, I think for me, it's it's more just a matter of having a very clear understanding of how this impacts the community, um, you know, and I, I don't like it's not a, a matter of not having confidence. It's a matter of not understanding what it is that I'm voting for and wanting to very clearly understand the positive aspects that this will do to change, you know, the entire community, um, because I can see that it's it's a very broad resolution. It affects just about everything it's community it's culture it's you know language it's everything um and that's the point of universal design um but it you know to me it's like what does that mean if someone came to me and said why did you support this i'd be like well it sounded great you know what exactly does it do though what does it look like what is how how does it move the parts in place you know what what can i explain to someone you know in depth of of what their community is going to look like for them. Um, that's, I guess, like why I really appreciated the way that BPEC did it because we got that understanding. We could see that and have that communication and conversation of, about all of that. Um, and so, you know, for me, it's it's not that this isn't positive. I, I can see that it, it genuinely is. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, we really do need to have that conversation um, because it's a resolution. So I don't know if anyone is available on the 14th. Um, we could probably get, since it's one item, we could probably get one item done by tomorrow 
to the city clerk's office to hold a special meeting um, anytime on the 14th. And then that would give us enough time after. Fourteenth. It's Wednesday. Next Wednesday. So we would post this tomorrow. Uh -huh. Okay, just this item. Yeah, and it would be a special meeting. Okay. Um, I'll wait to see if that's going to happen. Okay. So we need a time. I don't know if there's any any time that someone isn't available. I'm not available in the morning. In the morning. I'm not available in the morning either. Okay. I am not available at all. I'm actually out of town that day. Okay. I'm not available at eight to nine thirty, one o'clock, five to seven, and seven to nine. <laughs> So before five, you would be available between one and five, or you'd be available? Two and five. Two and five. At least two. The later, the better. So any time between, so I would say three to five, the same time, because it's usually when we are available. <laughs> it looks like um, that's how it works. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> let's do um, three to five next week next Wednesday um, okay. and for the members who aren't here I can send them a notice um, and since we're having a special meeting that day um, and the BPAC resolution was supposed to be on an action item yeah do you want to include that on that meeting we can't because last time I tried to have more than one item on a special meeting, the city clerk's office said that that wasn't allowed. Okay, so then we'll just do one. Yeah. Okay, and that's not a problem. Yeah. I just wasn't aware. Clerk? <laughs> the rules have changed. Maybe. Yeah. If you could confirm that, because I wouldn't mind. Um, but that's what I was told. We tried to, I tried, well, it was five items, but it was, it was a very specific thing and we literally got ignored. I um, have a feeling it has to do with an open meetings act requirement or my, and so yeah. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna worry. I think we should just stick to the one item then okay. and we'll address the BPAC resolution at the next meeting. Okay. 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 Yeah. Go ahead, Maria. Um, the ARP presented to quality of life and they gave an excellent presentation about the process and about the program and um, the valuable resources and support that come with being a part of the network. And so I'm wondering if that might be something that I we can post or send out to the committee so they can watch that um, recording and I'll give you the timestamp so you don't have to sit through the entire meeting, but um, he gave an excellent presentation and I think that'll be valuable for you to to see and, and hear about the um, the program from the ARP if you're interested. Yes, yes. definitely. Yeah. Thank you. I would really would appreciate great. that. Okay, and that I would be great. That, I see that Gary Williams is here, so thank you for being here, Gary. Um, so that if there, a pleasure. Yeah, thank you. Madam Chair, I was also going, I was writing in the notes to you directly, but if there is additional information as to the tenants of the age friendly states and communities program, mm -hmm. uh, you can go to aerp.org forward slash age friendly, and you'll find a plethora of information there that will inform you as to uh, all the aspects of the program. Uh, the number of members throughout the country, inclusive of states that have been involved uh, with becoming members of this network. So I stand ready to assist in any way that's necessary, um, but I just wanted to chime in and let you know that you can gain insight as to the, the full concept of age friendly uh, by going to age friendly within the AARP.org uh, domain. Wonderful. Thank you for Thank that. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, thank you. Um, so if there are no further comments, we will be holding a special meeting um, to discuss this more thoroughly. 
um, discuss our edits or uh, recommendations and our support uh, for this resolution on hopefully if the city clerks can do this, um, which I think they can because I think it was five days and this will be five days um, ahead <clears throat> um, to hold a special meeting. So it'll be six days when if we can get it to them by tomorrow. Um, and that will be on February 14th from 3 to 5 p.m. So please make a note of that. And we may not need the Do whole we time. we need to vote on it? Yes, we need to vote on it. Sorry. A special meeting, yes. Move to have a special meeting on February 14th for 3 to 5. To discuss this resolution. I second that. May we have roll call, please? Chair Gish? Yes. Miriam Jowler? Yes. Aurora Black? Yes. Pam Parfit? <coughs> Eli, I'm sorry, Eli Vesquez? Is yes, with comment. With, with comment, February 14th is Valentine's Day. So happy Valentine's, everybody. You get to have a meeting. And also my wife's birthday. Oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> my wife's is on the 17th. <laughs> Angelique Chavez? Yes. Gina Maria Opalescent? Yes. Kendra Garcia? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, and thank you, Maria and, and Manuel. I really appreciate this. And I'm sorry for all of the shuffling. I know that you had submitted it, but it just like got lost in the shuffle. So I really, I feel bad <laughs> and I'm sorry that no, I was not prepared. Thank so. you. We appreciate hearing the input from the committee and we look forward to discussing further next week. Thank yeah, you so thank much. You. Thank you. Angelique, you had your hand up. I just wanted to say I recently um, was able to visit the senior center where Manuel um, works. We took a bunch of blessing baskets and came alongside Manuel and all of his seniors and purchased a bunch of meals for his seniors. And it was a great opportunity. And I really want to thank Manuel for that because the seniors just loved it. So you're doing a great job there, Manuel. And I just wanted to recognize you for that. Angelique, Chair. Uh, thank you very much, Angelique. The seniors still talk about it to this day. They were very, um, they were very excited when you came over, and you know they're very grateful that with what you, what your group did. So thank you very much for coming over. Okay. So our next item um, is uh, the bicycle and pedestrian advisory committee discussion of uh, BPEC resolution for maintenance and installation of bicycle and pedestrian facilities. And I'm just gonna keep this super short um, because we are going to discuss it in the next meeting. Um, but I did want to bring to your attention um, that um, there have been numerous drafts of this resolution going around. And um, I did view one that did include disability inclusive language um, which I have to say I greatly preferred. Um, I don't know what happened to that. Daniel, I know you were part of that discussion and Regina was adding stuff and taking stuff out and deciding on what the final draft was gonna be is my understanding. Um, the final draft is not is not adequate to me. <laughs> I just wanna, as a disabled person, you know, I feel like there should be something in there. Um, so I don't know if you want to go over just a really brief run over of, of what went of what went on with the city attorney, Regina, you know, whatever you feel like sharing. Well, I'm limited to probably I'm not familiar with the rules here, but I'm familiar right. that um, respectfully, Regina has been a key leader in in ensuring people with disabilities gain access to public right of ways and things of that nature. And um, and she is receptive to the recommendations I bring forward. Um, as far as the language, um, 
if you can specify at the at the next meeting what language you would want, or if you could send that in advance so that uh, the sponsoring counselor could uh, give that uh, uh, consideration. Um, and also, um, if Regina supports it as well, I mean, um, I'm not I'm not I'm not sure which language you were referring to because there were so many things I was submitting and and Regina was also we're bouncing off ideas. So um, so I know that everyone involved in this is 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 their heart is involved in making life for Santa Feans a better and so so I'm I'm glad that uh, everyone's on board. Yeah, and in particular, I think that it was the comment, and I know Eli probably remembers more than more than me, but um, because it was his comment, um, but it was about including just a general statement that the city will comply with all federal, state, and local laws regarding <laughs> okay. um, disability access and inclusion, or it was something like that, um, and that was in there, and then it was removed um, in a draft that I saw, um, and that was <clears throat> recommended. Um, by Eli and it may have been recommended by the committee. I don't remember if, I don't think we took a vote though. Um, and so um, I don't know, Eli, if you have something to add on on that part, if you remember. Um, not specifically, but <clears throat> I know I put in general um, comments in there on the whereas section and tried to just lay out the kind of the bare bones of, of accessibility and ADA compliance. Um, I think some of the language could be changed and modified to keep the same um, general theme of what I was uh, putting in there. I don't actually have it in front of me. But, I have it either. I have yeah, it, it would be, it, go ahead, okay. Yeah, so <clears throat> Eli sent us, um, Whereas the city is committed to ensuring all pedestrian and bicycle facilities utilize principles of universal design and are acceptable in compliance with ADA Title II, enhancing the mobility and safety of all individuals, including those with disabilities. And whereas identifying and prioritizing maintenance and repair needs, the city shall incorporate considerations for accessibility improvements, ensuring compliance with ADA Title II, and prioritizing modifications that enhance accessibility for individuals with disabilities. So those are the suggestions. Um, and this will be included in the packet in the next month. It was supposed to be in ours today. Um, and so um, that was just what I wanted to bring up. That was like the main change that I saw that, you know, we had a huge discussion on for that to be included. And so for it not to be included in the draft that I've received, I, I guess I want to know why, like, why was what was going on? You know, was it, you know, internally, they said it wasn't feasible, or it was putting the city at risk for a lawsuit, or, you know, I'm no. like, I'm curious, you know, I'm just, I'm just curious of saying, why was that removed? If it was not considered something that's not legally enforceable, or, you know, it just no. made, me, made me question. I would Good. say that that wasn't the reason, um, and please never think that. I mean, it is implied and always understood that the city will always go in that direction to comply with the requirements as they build something. We're not going to spend millions of dollars on on infrastructure and not comply with um, with the requirements, especially on my watch, because uh, I'm going to be reviewing documents as they go to construction. So that's not going to happen, and and. And that's not why that language was removed. I think um, I wasn't the one that was in writing the, the language. And I leave it up. Those individuals who were in charge of that uh, made that choice. And I think the spirit of the current resolution uh, has factored in the needs of people with disabilities. It may not have a legal language in place that says we will it's not the ten commandments that we're gonna write in but but we understand we're gonna comply i mean that's just a give it that's an understanding of the entire governing body they know that we will comply and as members of staff we will always do that uh, so so i don't think that's why it was taken out so and i guess I would ask that Councilor, mm -hmm. uh mr Councilor garcia can can give his thoughts on the concern because i think the draft is is I don't know if it's a draft. I think it's the final version. So I 
I don't know what the process is beyond this. Right. No, I think for me, it was more that, um, you know, I guess just the history of the city not complying with ADA adequately. Um, clearly, going forward, we are working really hard to establish that the city will comply at all times. Um, but I think we're still in this in this area where we're not feeling it quite yet. You know, it's it's just a, a new turn um to towards the way that they've supposed to been sp supposed to have been doing things for the last 30 years and so you know for me i think on that level it's important to include um disability language just because we are trying to create that culture where it just happens um and so and it's not there yet and i can you know we're we're moving forward but there is still a lack of understanding happening, um, you know, and a, and a lack of training and awareness and all of that. So I, you have valid concerns. In this gray area. Yeah. I so mean, that's where I feel like a little bit uneasy. Your, um, feel, your feelings and the uneasy sense of it is valid. I mean, you do have concerns. You, you've had experiences, but um, we're not going to, I would encourage you to know that, that the city is, is taking on a new day. And, and I know that as a professional in this field, that the atmosphere within is positive and that they're, they're working with me to understand the requirements. They understand it is difficult, but they understand it's required. So, so I will say to the committee that your feelings of uneasiness, uh, please rest assured that things will be getting better. And so, so I would ask that um, that if it's not included in this resolution, the language, rest assured that the people involved are thinking of the requirements and thinking of individuals with disabilities. So, so please uh, try not to to let the past um, make you think that we're going to fail again and again. We're not. That's not going to happen. Thank you, Daniel, uh, Councilor Garcia. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair Gish and members of the committee. I'll uh, work to get some clarification as to why that language was removed. Um, I think this is maybe an opportunity to look at uh, the item not being uh, heard and discussed and acted on upon today. The silver lining is we, we can work in it to get some clarification, bring it back to the committee and, and fully address it next meeting, because I think that uh, definitely uh, defeat some of the spirit of the intention of this resolution by omitting that information. So let me work with city staff to figure out why it was omitted and we can bring that information back to the committee uh, because I fully believe it was, I remember it was there before and uh, let's let's do, if unless there was some legal justification why it had to be uh, omitted, then let's work to get it, put it back in. Thank you so much, Councilor Garcia. I really appreciate that. Um, uh, Madam Gina. Chair, do you... yeah, go ahead, Eli. I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, let Regina go if she was ahead of me. Or Gina or... Maria is next. So... Gina Maria. Yeah. Sorry, I, I will wait my turn. No problem. Okay. Thank you. I do believe that Eli would be state what I want to say better, but I, if I'm not mistaken, there is a legal reason for pulling that out because it would be like putting into this idea. You know, like um, if you park on the stripes, you're going to get fined. We already know that. That's already established. It's already a statute of law, whatever it is. Okay, so so I think there's a legality here, and that's why it was pulled out. If I'm not mistaken, I should have been a lawyer, right, Eli? Em, go ahead. You um, know. It can always take the LSAT, Gina Maria. <laughs> no. <laughs> I um, I have three things quickly. Eli, if you're going to speak, if you can be on the screen, I, I will get what you're saying. That's one thing. Two things. Second thing is that personnel changes. <laughs> the city may be on board right now, but I think it's important if it's legal to put specific language in this um, 
and I don't know what it bill or what's it a referendum what's it called it's a resolution a resolution thank you um for future reference <laughs> staff changes and I had another queer uh, thing I'd like to say to Councillor Garcia thank you so much for backing this resolution specifically as a cyclist I want to say how dangerous the paths, streets are. And that to me, it's crazy that a bike path or lane will be put in and not maintained. It's like paving St. Francis Drive and never repaving it, never sweeping it, never filling the potholes. But that's what happens with bike paths, pedestrian paths. It, it, it's just like not in the mentality and you wouldn't do it for any other means of transportation, but you do it, they do it to pedestrians and cyclists, but not even a thought of maintaining it. So I thank you for bringing this out. <laughs> yes, I very much agree with what Pam just said. and. Um... And I'm very grateful for the time that Councillor Garcia has spent with us and meeting with us um, both here and to prepare us. Um, when I spoke at the BPAC meeting, um, it really genuinely helped me to feel um, less anxious um, attending the meeting. And I really appreciated that, um, you know, being heard and being no, understanding what it, what it is that I was, you know, there for <laughs> um, really genuinely helped me. Um, to not be so anxious. Um, so I see some comments, one second. So Miriam, it says it's legalese and we should stick to established protocols. Um, so yeah, I mean, if, like I said, if there was a legal reason for it to not be there, fine. Um, but I, you know, it just, I, I think just stating that the mayor's committee on disability is in support of it, you know, it, 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 I mean, I guess unless people have access to our letter, you know, of why we support it, um, you know, it, you know, or if they said the Mayor's Committee on Disability supports this because it increases, you know, disability inclusion and access to the community, um, bike paths and trails and all of that. I think that that would be maybe like it would feel a little bit better to me. Um, you know, clearly I'm not going to not vote for it because of that. Like, I just, I'm curious about what the process was um, and why why it was changed. So um, anyway, I think that we have had <laughs> enough of a discussion on this one. I know that there's an important discussion um, next, which is that the BPAC um, has a request for disabled committee members participation and advising. Um, and if you want to go ahead and present that to the committee, um, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair Gish and members of the committee. I think this item can be tabled until March as okay. it will allow for BPAC to come with the formal proposal okay. uh, to the committee. That way the body can really understand, you know, have, have the appropriate documentation and supporting materials in regards to the request that's coming from BPAC. Um, I can give a sneak peek. That way folks can begin to uh, think about it, plant the seed, and then we can have a more thorough discussion in March. And I'm happy to bring a BPAC member or two with me to our next meeting. But uh, the overall intention is uh, BPAC wants to update its uh, establishing resolution that establishes the body and include uh, in, in some fashion, the initial discussion was to look at how we can include membership, but uh, we don't know if membership is the appropriate avenue or vehicle, but we want to ensure that there is a strong voice from the disability community on BPAC and represented at every BPAC meeting. And so um, overall, that's, that's kind of the very high level uh, thought process and, and uh, initial thoughts. Um, but as I mentioned, can come with more of a formal proposal in, in March. And uh, that way we can have a more robust discussion in regards to how this committee 
could uh, co cross collaborate with BPAC in, in some fashion. Um, and just to give an example, um, there's uh, also cross collaboration happening between BPAC and the Public Safety Committee. Uh, through the Public Safety Committee establishing resolution, it identifies that one BPAC member sits on that committee. And so some of the initial thoughts from BPAC membership was to uh, maybe uh, amend the committee assignment list to ensure that a member from this body sits on BPAC. Uh, but that's where we, again, we don't want to make the decisions on your behalf. We want to include you in the decision-making process and ultimately understand what would be the best avenue to ensure that uh, the, the voice from the disability community is represented on BPAC as uh, we work to uh, address many things through uh, bicycle pedestrian infrastructure and, and make sure that it's accessible to all. So that, that's a very high level overview, um, more to come. Uh, I apologize uh, that this uh, agenda item wasn't well prepared. I know that Chair Gish and I had talked about bringing this proposal uh, to this committee uh, in February, um, but I didn't, I didn't uh, know that it ultimately got on here. I know the BPAC, the, the resolution for the BPAC presented was on the committee, uh, proposed to be on the agenda. So uh, I do apologize on my behalf and, and BPAC's behalf and we'll come better prepared in March and ready to have a, a robust conversation with y'all. Thank you so much. And um, if you could get me, I know it had been mentioned in your meeting, um, in December um, about some kind of a priorities list or something that the BPAC has, that would be fantastic to see like the areas that you are focusing on and we can see how we overlap um, because we have numerous, I know we have numerous uh, shared goals and needs. And so um, I think that that would really help for our committee to see what your committee is doing. And then we can start thinking really collaboratively um, on how to move forward, either as a committee as a whole, or as an individual member, or both, maybe some kind of, you know, you know, some things come to the committee as a whole, and some things are fine to be handled by an individual, um, or we could do outreach with the community, with just the disabled community in Santa Fe, um, you know, if no one here is able to participate on, on BPAC uh, committee formally, um, there's just so many options, and, and, you know, my my brain automatically gets really excited about all of this and the idea of collaborating and really pulling the community together to accomplish um, our shared goals um, and and really achieve um, the things that we need to achieve in our community. So, um, so this is really exciting to me, and I absolutely will put this on our our our, our next agenda. And thank you so much, everyone. Um, I don't know who is here from the BPAC um, besides you. Um, but everyone um, on the BPAC was so kind to me when I was there and, you know, I was, I was nervous anyway, and I just, you know, felt really supported to be there. Um, and so I really appreciate um, the time that you've all taken. So I wanted to say that. Kendra, you had your hand raised. Oh, I was just, um, I had put it in the comments, but I do oh. need to leave. So sorry. That's fine. Thank you so I much. Bye, everyone. Thank you. And I know, Councillor Garcia, you need to leave as well. Um, do you have anything to share? Um, no, Madam Chair, no, nothing else. Uh, okay. I will make sure that uh, for the next meeting, we'll get you the materials in plenty of advance. That way, uh, the committee can make sure that it's accessible to all. Um, if there's anything Besides, uh, so I think the priority list that the committee was referencing was our strategic plan. Our yeah. committee developed a strategic plan for the committee. So I'll make sure to share that with, with you all. I'll make sure to share the resolution that uh, created the committee with you all. That way you can see that how ultimately what the, the body is uh, guided by. Um, and then if there's anything else you feel would be helpful or relevant, uh, happy to share that with you all. Um, I, ju I just want to make sure that uh, we can gather up all the information in sufficient time. That way, folks can feel well prepared for the next meeting. Yeah, thank you so much. That's very much appreciated. And thank you for, like I said, all of the time that you've taken and all of the work that you're doing. I really appreciate this. Yeah, absolutely. And, and uh, just as to the entire committee, thank you all for the work that you all do. 
uh, not only during your monthly meetings, but ongoing through, throughout in, in the in-between time. So thank you all. Uh, I look forward to working with you, not only in the BPAC capacity, but as a counselor capacity, as I've mentioned to Chair Gish, it's been a priority of mine to ensure that the community advisory committees, in particular, your committee really feels empowered to uh, provide input and insight to the governing body as we make our ultimate policies for, for everybody in our community. So just thank you all for everything that you do. Um, I apologize that I got to do leave early. I've got to head downtown here for a 5.30 meeting. But uh, if, if anybody needs anything, uh, I'll put my contact info in the chat. Please, committee members, anybody, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'm always here to help. Thank you so much, Councillor Garcia. Thank you all. Have a successful rest of your meeting. Thank you. Quick question. When do you guys usually meet? So BPAC meets uh, once a month. Uh, and the frequency is almost the same time of the same week that you all meet. So BPAC meets tomorrow. Tomorrow. So we meet once a month, the, dependent on the Thursday schedule on the, the uh, city council chamber availability. So it's usually the first or second Thursday of every month. Um, but I, that's one of the things I can share with everybody is the BPAC meeting schedule for 2024, just in case anybody wants to tune in and, and watch the meeting or attend similar to yours, we've got public comment. Um, so that's one of the things we want to encourage folks to participate in our meetings, uh, whether it is through, um, as, as we were talking about, through the cross collaboration, through trying to identify how we might include folks through membership or just uh, sh show up. We want it. We want to make sure folks uh, share their insight and expertise with us. And you are on YouTube. I, I haven't noticed that. Yes, the the BPAC meetings are shown on YouTube. Okay. Thank you so much, Gina Maria, for asking that. Okay. Have a great evening, everybody. Thank you. You too. You as well. Thank you. So. Let's see the next item. And I think we have to hold a vote to extend the meeting. Um, or we can just do it. <laughs> I don't know who else. Um, you know, we, in the past, we have just moved forward. Um, but if you want to hold a vote, um, we have, let's see, we have a quick discussion of inclusive city meetings. We have an update on the emergency ADA kits and that looks like it's it. So why don't I just move ahead? Cause it shouldn't take that long. Okay. Can I say one thing? Yeah, go ahead. We, we didn't get to discuss the priorities list, the final draft, which you nope. had worked on with Regina. Yeah. We're gonna miss the cycle again, unless we could put it on the 14th. So, so Regina has it um here is what happened so i wanted her to well i wanted all of us to have the final draft in this meeting yeah. and then regina asked for it which i thought was great she wanted to review it um she has pretty much sent off what was on there to the people who need to see it i don't okay. know if it's everyone but i know that it has been sent off to some pretty key people Okay. Um, and so it's not like it's not being moved forward. It, things are going to be done. And she knew way more than I do, obviously, uh, about resolutions planned and, you know, city planning planned and budgets and, you know, things that are already happening. And so she just literally went through that list. I mean, you know how long it is. It's like eight pages or so and identified each item and was like, you know, this isn't going to happen or this needs more advocacy or this is happening already. We can include this in this budget. She did everything and I want that list. So, um, so yeah. We all um, want that list. Yeah. So I just want to make a, make a okay. note for all of us that Councilor Garcia left his information in the chat. And if you cannot access that, let me know and I will email it to you. Thanks. Yeah. Um, so really quickly, um, discussion and plan to implement inclusive city meetings. Um, there is some discussion of creating a new city council chamber. It would be like a community, um, 
gathering place for the city. Um, and it would need to be fully accessible, obviously. Um, that is the only real update that I can think of. I know, Daniel, if you have more information on that of ways to make the city council meetings, governing body meetings, committee meetings more accessible that is actually being discussed and planned because there's, there hasn't been any real updates. Well, from what I understand, nothing has been officially discussed as far as doing anything outside of using the current uh, facilities. They did indicate that they finished uh, installing the loop system. Um, I, we haven't tested that, so that's something that probably should be done, that we should test it to make sure it works. And if it doesn't, then we need to know that. Uh, another thing that uh, count, one of the counselors who has a disability is asking um, for some way for presentations to be more accessible. Um, IT is working on getting that done. We are going to hardwire, um, I believe it's either a laptop separately or, or an iPad or something to that effect that's going to be hardwired so that presentations can be presented on to, to the individual council members so they can see it and then also broadcast it onto a television that's going to be facing the public. And in addition, um, city clerk and I have been talking about also broadcasting uh, sign language interpreting services to the public at the at the specific site of City Hall. Um, hopefully that also could be put on air as well. Um, that's those are the things that we're we're looking at. Um, of course, things take time, but it's we're going we're trying to resolve those things at this point. Um, so if someone has a question more than the, if I haven't answered, um, feel free to ask me right now. Yeah, the only other question that I have for that, um, well, Pam, go ahead and then I'll ask my question because it's not directly related. Oh, it's not a question. It's a volunteer service. Okay. Just a loop. If somebody can tell me how to do that, I, is it always on? I'm not sure. And that's what we can, if you want to be the volunteer to experience that, uh, we can set up something to where you can come over and have city clerk demonstrate its use and and then you can ask those questions as to when do they turn it on and how can someone who needs it knows that it's on so that's what we want to make sure i think it should be turned on at all times all but sometimes time. we, but sometimes we only have three people in there and and they don't want they don't need it so well, it, here's my concern from experience staff changes and who is ever in charge of AV that night doesn't know how to turn on the loop. Correct. Doesn't and know so that's how where... to adjust the volume. Sometimes someone turns it down. We don't need it. Oh, well, we'll just turn it off or down. Or and that's the where janitor we're comes in. I mean, I I really care about this loop and that there are written directions next to it. And then it's always on because if you don't need it, you, you don't use it <laughs> so let's let's go ahead and have something happen if you're willing to be the participant um let's let's do that and then we can enforce those ideas onto city clerk so they can understand the best practices that yes. should be instituted yes and okay. then one question one question i have in addition to that sorry to interrupt it i'm I, know I, I just said, how can, do I set this time up with you? Are you going to go to the city? I go to the city and suggest. Let me, let me ask the clerk when it's possible to do that. And then I can call you to ask you when we can do that with you. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel and Pam. Um, one question that I have in addition to that with regard to the public meetings. I know that you are trying to get the city clerk to OCR documents, but that some of the documents still didn't OCR properly. Correct. And so they were not readable. Um, they just appeared to be images, um, even though they had been OCR'd apparently, it did not show on my end. Um, do you wanna explain a little bit about that? Yeah, my understanding from IT or from from sources from IT is that, that uh, PrimeGov might have something that says that's converting it back to a to a 
to a JPEG or an image. And then after that, it also goes through Microsoft to the end user. And also it's becoming an image or maintaining it as an image. And then, so when you turn it on to read it, it's not OCR and you can't search it. And that's something that uh, we need to think about. An option for temporary, I'm thinking, but I'm not sure how it can be done. I got to confirm this. this is just a thought that I'm having, and it may not be a good thought, um, is to have available the uh, items in PDF format and that upon request for an accessible format that we email it directly to the individual needing that format so that they can have it um, as quickly as possible. Uh, three-day advance, since we have it available five days in advance, a three-day advance notice of that would be doable. Um, but I have to first touch base with uh, city clerk and see how is that possible uh, with their workload to get it done right. and so they can ensure it. Because um, that is a, a way of providing accessibility. But then I think about that and I go, well, maybe that's not readily accessible. And I want the future to be readily accessible. That means you go on to your computer, you go to the site, you open up the uh, agenda and you pull down the documents and it's accessible. That's readily accessible. Asking for the items to be um, sent to you is not entirely the place I would like us to be. I think we can do better. But uh, but in the meantime, I think maybe that's a quick solution until we remedy the situation. And that would, of course, need to be communicated to the public very clearly yeah. and stated yeah, we in the have meeting. The, we'd have to put that on the agenda item as opposed to... And I, to, I think and that the, then. the governing body, if that happens, um, whatever happens with it, I think whatever happens, regardless, should be stated in a public statement in the governing body so that the public is informed because a lot of things that's been happening with the city clerks is they go and they change process or they do something different and no one ever knows about it until you go and try and get your accommodations. And then you're like, wait a minute, that changed, you know, and you don't really understand. Um, and that's and where we can- Maria, Prime Gov is not accessible. It is really not usable. And that's where um, we can, um, that's as, as we go in that direction, that's where we're gonna have the opportunity to redefine um, the approach of how city clerk presents things of this nature at, at, uh, from, from the beginning of the meeting. So that way it could be a general statement. And those of you requiring an accommodation in future meetings, you may request the items in an accessible format three days in advance. If they just made that kind of a statement at the beginning of a meeting, that might be something that people can hear and listen to and understand. And and again, um, the options of that I just gave you, I prefer to be readily accessible, but um, with technology, I'm not sure where we're at at this point. I gotta assess where our options are um, and what what's the next step because uh, we're gonna have a new vendor and it's not gonna be PrimeGov. And so I need to um, break it down with those individuals to make sure that they're gonna be able to do what we need. And then we need it to be tested. Yeah. One one option has happened in the past, which is where we uploaded. We used to upload our agendas and packets to directly to the website. So maybe there could be a web page that's made for accessible format documents that people just know to that like people can go to where all of the meetings are just listed out with the same thing in a doc format instead um, of the PDF. I mean that that's one possibility we could yeah. get. Yeah, um, doc format. That's just the accessibility page for all city web, you know, for all city committee meetings. Yeah, and the thing is, some of the items that are on on those uh, committees, uh, especially the finance, has contracts, and they legally cannot host a doc uh, version, right? Uh, because of the signatures already in place, and plus it could be manipulated, right. and those are legal concerns that they have, right. and I do share that that would be an undue burden for yeah. them to to expose a contract in that fashion so right. so I yeah i would agree with that but i'm talking about like the minutes and things like that yeah, that should have like been that, made too. accessible and they just were not accessible for this last governing body meeting at all so yeah um yeah. 
that's probably an option. Uh, Word doc, preferably, um, when possible, PDF, um, OCR, when absolutely necessary, um, especially for sensitive documents. Yeah. Tables, you know, like, you know, Excel spreadsheets and stuff like that are difficult, yeah. if not impossible. Um, I'll probably have to touch base with you and what your thoughts are on making those accessible. Uh, because I don't have the disability, I would need more perspective on that. Yeah. Excuse me, what does OCR mean? Uh, I can't optical. Follow this. What does, what's the practical application if you don't remember the exact? Okay, well, I could tell you. Basically, it's taking a document, a written document, converting it into a PDF that can be searchable. And that makes it, that's the, the, the format is OCR. That means you can go in there and type the word the, and then it'll highlight the word the throughout the document. Okay. If, if it's an image PDF, you can't do that. And that's where it's difficult for a person with a disability who has a reader and they want to read the document, they can't read it because it's a single image. And that's the inaccessibility. Of of not having it OCR'd, optical. Uh, I can't remember the, the the acronyms, but it's what it means. Searchable resolution. There you go. I think that's what it means. Thank you. I have another organization that I use that has an accessible website, and I need to know the meaning of some of these words. Okay. Pam, I can send you um, examples of one of an accessible format versus a non one where it's OCR and not OCR um, so that you can see and play with it and highlight the text. Basically, if you can highlight the text, generally it's readable with a text reader. Um, so if someone can't, um, you know, read text or or has a learning disability or whatever, where they need to hear <laughs> the text. If it's an image, it can't be read, but if it's OCR, it can be read with text readers. An image can be. If cannot it's be. Never. An image cannot Never. be, no. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Can you send that to me as well? Chairman? Yeah, I will. Yeah, I'm going to make a note. Uh, this is Eli here. And sorry, Pam, uh, my apologies. I'm in the car, I'm driving, so I can't turn the video on. Um, I'd be happy to also share some process documents that might be able to help the city with making sure that their documents are accessible. And this will be part of the training that we can discuss next meeting, next month. Um, I will say the, the whole term OCR is like very rudimentary and very, very basic. Um, PDFs themselves have to be properly tagged and made accessible. PDFs can be made accessible, um, but it does take uh, know how. Um, I'll also add that this is a real opportunity if the city is looking for a new vendor, a prime gov like provider, um, to include in the language requirements for them to be web content accessibility compliant AA 2.1 AA. Um, I've shared that with the city um, because it really puts the onus and the obligation on the vendor to provide accessible documents so that we don't have to go back in the back end and fix the documents manually or create processes outside of what the vendor should do. So it's a real opportunity now in the RFP process to include those obligations and actually rate the vendor or potential vendor through the RFP process and have accessibility be part of their rating. Um, so I just encourage that. There's lots and lots of information about how to do that. If you look at 508 compliance, and uh, I'll, I'll share those uh, that information with the city, and we can include that in our discussion next month as well. You're muted, Turkish. Sorry, that was like the tenth time. Huh. Go ahead, Daniel. <laughs> well, um, with regards to city clerk and the new vendor, the process had started, um, I believe, in November. And as of date, they've already signed contracts and the vendor has indicated that they're going to meet those specific standards. Um, of course, I don't believe until I see it. And so we're going to want to ensure that they demonstrate that to us as we move along. They will be in place um, within six months. 
um, they're replacing PrimeGov in that time frame. And so, so there, that's where we're at now. We're past the solicitation of a of a vendor. We've already they've already selected one. And oh no, where'd you go? What's that? Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes. Something came something came up on my screen. I don't know what. Yeah, uh, Pam is sharing a whiteboard, and I don't know how to turn. It Pam off. is having a hard time. I want to say that I need to leave, but I can't figure out chat. <laughs> oh, okay. I've um, had auditory fatigue. I just can't go on. I've been on my Zoom meeting since from 1.30 today and too. went straight into this one. And I I can't um, do it anymore. So okay. sorry, I'm That's okay. leaving. Okay, she's leaving and will she leave us with the white no. Okay. Yeah, I'm Zoomed. Zoomed. <laughs> yeah. So I just have a really quick last update, um, which was um, that Daniel, you had mentioned, this is for item um, 7H, um, just yes. to tell the mayor's committee about the emergency kits that had been purchased. Um, okay. We, of course, you know, we have the two emergency kits that have been purchased, I think before I even got here. Um, they are limited in their use in that it's only used for one-to-one -one communication. Um, the That um, can be used probably by emergency management in some cases, but it's limited. Um, we're the director of, of emergency management and I have talked about um, making it available for HR so that if they at a pinch need to discuss something with an individual, with a hearing impairment, they can do that. Uh, and that could be something that's done. But I also have some good news from the director of, of uh, emergency management. We're purchased, he's purchasing within the next 30 days. It's in process already. He's, we've already looked at two um, um, systems that are able to be utilized for more than one individual for groups. And so, uh, so that's what's being purchased. We're buying two two sets. Uh, one will be housed with with emergency management, and one will be housed with city clerks for um, for their use if someone needs it. Um, they can they can request it and utilize it. Um, in the event that there's an emergency situation, emergency management controls those two items, so they would be able to use them out in the field if if that needs to happen. So he's already purchased those. They're individually approximately nine thousand dollars a piece, so we're getting two of them. I believe yeah, that's what we're doing. Yeah. Okay, you're muted. Again, you're muted. I wanted to say that that resolves um, a lot of the issues that we were having. Um, I know when we last used the kit, um, it had to be used by one person within six feet of space, um, which is not very productive if there is an emergency um, or even an event just, you know, for, for people to be able to attend an event to have to crowd together in a little six foot space. Um, and so this does address that accessibility need. Um, fingers crossed. <laughs> um, I actually really look forward to it, um, to being able to see it. So I, that's my Me hope. Too. We will get to test it out and yeah. um, yeah. and see how it works. And okay. also on the same subject, I, oh, go ahead, Eli. Well, uh, I'm a little confused. So you purchased a new, some more kits or a new type of kit? A new First kit. question, second question. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, we, we, you know, and I don't wanna be negative, but we've requested a training on the kits for at least maybe a year. Mm -hmm. um, and I just keep requesting it and it just seems to not go anywhere, which is a little like frustrating at some point, but also I don't know what else to say other than just tell us that you don't want to do the training and that's fine. We'll move on. But I, I'm sorry, I don't mean to be frustrating, but this has been a request that we put in multiple times. So I'm not sure where we're at on that and I'll, I'll just make the request again, but just please explain to us if that's going to happen or not. 
Yeah, and I did ask that question today of the director. He did say that he could do a training with a groups, a small group, like um, about four of us. So so he can show us show us the, the devices and and then he'd be willing to do that. Um, so I guess we can decide who wants to do the training and and when we can we meet physically with him and where so that we can do that. I would say um, my office out here, you've you've been out here um, is more conducive for 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 testing it out here because I know his office is out there. Um, and it's a real small office for him, and it's not conducive for public. So, so I would say let's have it out here, um, and then we can take our time looking at the equipment and and trying it out. And he can do a training here because we have a conference room that he could use. So we can we can set something up. So uh, let's let's talk about that. I mean, if you want to give me some um, some time frames. Let's do that. I can ask him when he's available as well and see if we can get it all together. Yeah, and I will send out a I can send out an email to the mayor's committee members. It, it probably should be well, Pam, it's definitely um a, a good person. Um I know Eli, I would really appreciate you being there. Um, I would appreciate to be there. I just don't know who else. Um you know, it would be interested. So I'm going to send out um, an email. Go ahead, Angelique. I don't mean to interrupt you. Um, okay. Since I volunteer with the Red Cross, I would love to be a part of that one as well. Okay. Please. So okay. the first training we can have me, Eli, Pam, and Angelique, along with you, Daniel, and uh, Brian Williams. Yay. And Brian. Yeah. Okay. And along the same this topic, um, I'm aware that at the, I guess, a special event center or civic center, whatever you can call it, that they had an amplifier there that um, was broken and it's still on order. And, and I'm not sure when it's going to be in place, but I know that they have an app where someone with, um, with hearing impairments can go from room to room, meeting to meeting with this app and get a loop system, uh, and use a loop system that way, and that it's pretty advanced. So um, I know that's what they're using for conventions and things of that nature, but they're still waiting for a, a new amplifier that goes into their whole system. You should see the system. It looks like a war room and it's, it's really nice, but it, they're expensive and they've been waiting and it's been a supply chain issue um, waiting for that return particular piece of equipment but uh, that's what they do so 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 they they make it available for anyone who needs to use it for conventions or meetings or things like that nature and i was hoping to see if it would be there for the mayor's um address but i'm not sure it's going to be there for that okay um will you update me if it is yeah so and i'm hoping i'm hoping that the system that brian is buying will be available for that time frame. So I let's see if it is. Yeah. Okay. Um, please let me know what whatever happens. I would really appreciate knowing that. And I can send that out to the mayor's committee members so that they know and can tell everyone as well. Okay. Um, so our next item is uh subcommittee reports. Are there any subcommittee reports at all? No? Okay. Um next is matters from the staff. There's mm -hmm. a statement <laughs> statement to say <laughs> other than um we'll uh vicky and i will work on this uh, we need to post this by friday for the special meeting so i i will get with vicky um between there and then and see if we can get this posted on there okay. and then um, before been... we before we post it we'll send it to you yeah so. i'm available um pretty much all day tomorrow yeah um, and so... um yeah i'm gonna be out but I will try to get this done. Okay, because I I gotta be, take care of some things. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I should be available. So if you text, if you email me, can you please text me? Because I can't access my city email except on my laptop. Okay. So it doesn't notify me on my phone at all. So as soon as we send you something, and this should be relatively short, I just gotta touch yeah. base with Vicky as to when we can coordinate item. this. Okay, it's gonna be the same language, I believe, the same item. 
Yeah, exactly. The and exact same post, thing. Special B to just post. And then yeah. we'll send you a, a draft of it. Then you'll confirm and then we'll post. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Thank you. And then, um, so if there's no more, then the other thing you're supposed to say, <laughs> it, it like gets lost in the loop. Um, a link to the video recording of this meeting will be added to the meeting minutes for the meeting. So <laughs> there you go. I said it for you. Thank you. Um, so matters from the committee. If there's anything to add. There's nothing for me either. Um, okay. So if there's nothing more, our next meeting is Wednesday, March 6, 2024. And with that, um, we are uh, adjourned. Special meeting, yeah. Okay. And oh, and we have a special meeting. We have a special meeting on February. February 14th. Yay, it was long, right? <laughs> hey, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Well, that's.